This is a lesson from our Storyboarding Foundations course. To get the full course, go to blueprintanimation.com slash storyboarding foundations. In this video, we're going to take a portion of a script and do what's called shot breakdown to create a thumbnail version of the board. Shot breakdown means we're going to figure out exactly what shots are necessary to effectively depict the scene that the script is describing. This involves some trial and error, so we want to work small so that we can be fast and stay focused on the scene as a whole rather than individual drawings. So the first thing you need is obviously a script. Later in this video, I'm going to do a demo using a script I downloaded from simplyscripts.com. You can find tons of scripts for TV shows, movies, plays, and radio shows. But regardless of where you get your script, the first thing to do is obviously read it and make sure you understand the story. Then you can either start from the beginning or pick the scenes that you think are most important or interesting and start there. Now scripts will differ in how specific they are in describing shots. Some writers will explicitly describe each shot using the terms we talked about earlier in the course. These are some abbreviations you might see used to indicate different kinds of shots in a script. Other writers might write their descriptions in more of a regular prose style and leave figuring out the exact shots to you. In either case, you're still going to need to figure out the details of each shot, and there's likely some things that the writer didn't account for. When you know the scene you want to start with, ask yourself these questions. What's the point of this scene? What happens in the scene? What is said and what's the subtext? What changes over the course of the scene? How many characters are in the scene? Where are they? What about the scene matters to each of those characters? How can your visuals make those characters' feelings apparent? How is the audience supposed to feel during the beginning, middle, and end of the scene? How does the previous scene affect this one? And how does this scene affect the next one? And also, from a practical perspective, Know the limitations of your production process so that you don't make boards that are unfilmable. For example, if your camera team doesn't have access to a crane, don't put in crane shots. And if you're working in animation, certain angles might be more difficult to draw and animate in. And in limited animation, there might be a predefined set of angles of the characters that are meant to be reused. Ask questions and figure out what is expensive or ambitious within your production, and only include those kinds of shots if you can really justify them from a story perspective. Also, as you read the script, make notes of any visual elements or moments that are key to telling the story, so you don't forget them when you're in the middle of boarding. So, for our example, I've picked out this script for Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? This is an episode of The Twilight Zone from 1961. I got this from simplyscripts.com. I've included it in the exercise files for the course, so go ahead and read it now. Now for the real 60s Twilight Zone, we'd have to assume the production was fairly limited with everything on sound stages, and it would also need to be a 4x3 aspect ratio. But for this exercise, I'm going to assume we're making this in modern times in HD, and we have a little more resources to shoot on actual locations. Now I'm going to thumbnail out the opening sequence and talk a little bit about what I'm thinking as I go. So the beginning is a montage that establishes the location. Generally when you do that you want to start with your widest shots first and then go in getting more specific. So it's important that it's on an island and that it's very snowy because those contribute to why the group is stranded in the diner later on. Now there's this spaceship that crashes, but the script doesn't say that we see the object that crashes, only that we hear it. But I wanted to use a little light reflecting off the ice of the pond to give a little stronger sense that something strange is coming close. Then when we cut away just before the crash, I wanted to include a road sign here to help establish that there's a road nearby the pond. Because we then fade to the state troopers pulling up and stopping. 
Now, it's boring to have shots of people just getting out of cars, but skipping to them outside would be too much of a time jump to have right here. So I'm doing a little trick. I cut away to the woods for a moment and show the light from their flashlight searching the trees. Then I can cut back and have them both out, and Perry is even already over the rail and heading down into the woods. The script specify that Perry is a newer trooper and Paget is a veteran, so I'm having Perry get the dirty work of trudging into the woods while Paget gets to hang back by the car. This is also helpful because Paget needs to use the radio in a minute, so this way he's right there and we don't have to spend shots getting him back. It also adds a little tension to have them separated like this. Now I'm trying to generally be consistent with my relative screen positions for the two characters, but the most important 180 line that I'm trying to stay aware of for this scene is the line from the car to the pond. With this wooded area where it's hard to see any landmarks, you've got to rely on your screen direction to keep the audience oriented. I'm thinking about camera moves a little bit, but we can be more precise with those in the full size board. You'll notice that I'm not writing out full lines, but I am marking them so that I know how they break up across the different shots. So this is a good example of why we need to do shot breakdowns. At this point in the script, it just says, Perry discovers tracks in the snow. That's a simple idea, but what does that actually look like? What shots show that? The way I'm doing it here is that I have Perry trudging back and we see him spot something. He scans it with his flashlight to show us that it's fresh footprints that he's seen. Then he checks his own footprints that he's been backtracking over, so he's sure that the other footprints aren't his. So we're watching him put together in his mind that something else was recently in the woods. Then later on he uses his flashlight and we use a camera pan to show that the prints lead back toward the pond. You'll notice that I've actually started using green and red pen to indicate camera moves. Green for the starting position and red for the stopping position. You should also label them A and B and draw arrows from corner to corner showing the direction of the move, but that's only really important on the final boards. Now we need to establish the other end of the track leading toward the diner. The diner needs to be pretty far away, and it'll be hard to see through the trees, so I have this tilt that follows the track toward some light source at the edge of the woods in the distance, and then I cut to a closer view of the diner so the audience knows what that thing in the distance is, and we know that our characters recognize it too. And then here we come to a cool thing they would do on Twilight Zone. At this point in the episode, you have a narrated intro by Rod Serling, and they would have him in the scene somewhere, but the characters would just not be aware of him. So I'm doing this long pan that initially follows the troopers, showing us they're headed in the direction of the diner, but then it stops on the narrator as they walk past him. Then it's just a slow truck in as he gives that big paragraph of narration.
And actually, since this pan is kind of long, I'll have the narration start earlier, and then we'll just finish it on the shot of the narrator. So once you have your quick first pass done, try to put the script out of your mind for a moment and look over your thumbnails and try to experience the story fresh based on your visuals. Check for boring or flat compositions, check for variety in distance and angle, and consider whether your shot choices are best serving the story point. This is also a good point to have someone else who knows the story look over your thumbnails with you and get their feedback. Revise your thumbnails and repeat this process as many times as you need to. This stage is the best time to make changes and try new ideas while you're still working small. So at this point, we should have a good idea of how many shots we're going to have for the scene, what types of shots they are, and what's in them. And since we're working in this thumbnail format, it hopefully didn't take that long. 